Okay. Hi, everybody. Are we ready? You have to make the fire code announcement. Yeah. Um, well, the first. Okay. Got uh, up. No. Okay. Okay. So we have to tell you, tell you all that um, if there's a fire, the doors are in the back. And please exit calmly and look for uh, an emergency stairwell. And if anybody else tells you to do a thing and they look really official, follow what they tell you to do. Okay, so who are we? We are, I'm Morgan, this is I'm, Jonathan. Oh, I'm Jonathan Burkhan. Uh, we're both uh, core contributors to Kubernetes Service Catalog, which is a Kubernetes extension project that implements the Open Service Broker API uh, to allow Kubernetes users to use Service Broker services. What he said. Um, and as we all know, the CF container runtime is at least partially based on Kubernetes, and thus the service catalog works in it as normal. And the reason it does so is we can start the presentation is, uh, I guess we gotta go through the agenda first. Um, we're gonna talk about service broker architecture, open service broker API, because that is what everything is compatible. That's the common open uh, behavior. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the service catalog in Kubernetes, uh, and I will show the, at least the commands to install it. And then Jonathan is going to do a demo with it and uh, show you how to run an app. Uh, and we're going to have the, we're, we're just going to run it in the kube side, but we're going to have the commands so you can do a sort of a comparative look at what it would look like to do the same thing in CF as in Kube. Uh, we have a couple of bullets on sort of try to make your broker's platform independent, at least in, in when you implement them. And then obviously questions and answers. And at the end of the slides, there are links for all of the stuff we're talking about. So you can go and download the slides because we uploaded them because they asked us to. Forward? Yes, forward. So open service broker API, OSBAPI, as we like to say. Uh, the reason this exists is because you have sort of your cloud native apps which uh, you know, run in containers so they, they kind of don't live a long time necessarily, they don't have any persistent storage, they uh, still however need access to all of the standard persistence uh, storage like databases, caching, you know, stuff like stuff you can see, big list we have. Um, so how do we solve this problem when your apps live in a system where they don't necessarily live very long and they can die and come back and die and come back and uh, run on one machine then run on a different machine? Uh, we do this by creating a service. And why would we do this? Well, we want your app developer to be concerned with your app development and not uh, all the infrastructure that they attach to. Um, so the app developer doesn't have to care where their MySQL is coming from. They just have it. They have uh, the parameters and uh, you know, credentials to access it. And then it's easy for them to use and standardize, at least partially. Um, so they can use it. And then your cloud provider platform, so CF and Cube and SAP has one and other people have uh, compatible open service broker platforms, they don't have to care where the service is, what it's doing, and it allows them to, if they are providing a managed platform, to expose uh, third-party services directly into the ecosystem. Uh, and they don't have to really care what the services do as long as they sort of behave appropriately and conform to the OSBAPI. Then, so what is it? It's basically a, a specification that allows us, that has five resources, list catalog, provision a service, bind to the service, unbind the service, deprovision the service. Uh, and so it's a whole life cycle of service management. Uh, so, you know, again, example, SQL database, message buses, Watson services, <laughs> all sorts of services that you might want to have access to, but you don't not want to run yourself necessarily. You don't want to have to manage it. You don't have to look at disk, network, whatever. You just get a, a network endpoint to connect to. Boom, done. Uh, so the client side here is the guy, is the platform. The platform talks to the broker. And so the brokers, or the platforms are, you know, we have Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes are sort of the public ones. I know of many other ones that are not sort of public, but they do exist. 
Um, do, 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 server side implemented, so that's the, that's the service brokers. The brokers actually in, implement these resources. Again, list the catalog, v2 catalog. Stuff uh, provision and deprovision is v2 service instances. And then uh, as a sub resource of instances, we have bind and unbind. Everybody good? Am I going too fast? Have we heard this before? OK, good. So, oops, I went backwards, forward. OK, so, yeah, this is basically we're going to go through the flow with some nice boxes and arrows here. Uh, so your, your cloud platform will talk to your catalog. It'll do the list catalog, and you'll get a nice uh, return JSON, which is you know, services have plans, services have plans, services have plans. OK. So now when you actually want to this way, uh, when you want to get a service, you want to provision a service, you say, okay, v2 service instance, whatever. And that sends a nice foo provision with parameters to your service broker. Your service broker does you don't care. That's the whole point. And then it returns foo was created. Uh, there's a synchronous flow and there's an asynchronous flow. That's not really important, but eventually you get a a service reference back. You get an ID and that's the thing that you use when you talk to the broker again or the, the platform talks to the broker. The platform will then expose into the client applications whatever it needs to as appropriate. So it's, it's that part we don't concern ourselves with. Cube does uh, secrets. Uh, CF does VCAP services. That's probably what you're familiar with. But that part of the specification, that's not part of the specification. That behavior is platform spe uh, specific. So again, now create a binding. Okay, well we have that idea earlier, foo. We give it there, it does whatever it needs to do to create a binding. In a case like a MySQL, that would be, okay, you said provision me a MySQL, so now you have a database. Service instance might be give me a new user or give me a new database and then what you get sent back is the, the username and password to access that specific piece of the database along with you know, URLs and dashboards and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so what are we talking about? We are talking about the specific platform, Kubernetes, CFCR, and inside of that we have service catalog, which is our real sort of the thing that implements the client side of the platform, which is the platform side of OSB, and then that talks to all our usual suspects as service brokers. So what is service catalog again? Service catalog implementation. Open Service Broker API. Uh, it's an incubator project in Kubernetes, started about a year, year and a half ago. Um, it's been at the bleeding edge of a lot of Kubernetes features in terms of things like the aggregated API extensions, RBAC, uh, very nice Helm charts that work. Um, the cool thing about this is that it is native Kubernetes. When you actually install it, it looks as if it was there the whole time. It is a it is installable at runtime, so what you do is you pull up APIs, you'll see, oh, nothing, it's not there, it's the normal APIs, then we install it with Helm, and then you do a list APIs, and boom, you see service catalog APIs. Um, so it's, it's very cool, and you can use cube control just as you could anything else. You can use the dynamic client go to access it, but we also provide client go specific to our resources. Um, so, install with Helm. Helm is the sort of preferred way to install things in Kubernetes as far as I can tell, and thus we have a Helm chart. Uh, make sure you have your Helm initialized, Helm init. Um, Helm itself needs access to things because it creates a bunch of stuff, so I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but we give it cluster admin in our documentation. There's probably a less, uh, less access-y role to bind, but uh, that's pr probably up to Helm to tell us at some point what, what we should be binding to. Uh, then we have our own beautiful service catalog charts.storage.googleapi.com, which contains the links uh, to the TARs that have our Helm charts, and uh, that has both service catalog as well as the user provided service broker. Then you install it wherever you want with whatever name you want. We just do catalog, catalog, because it's, it's convenient. 
but it can be installed anywhere. A lot of people I've heard run it in uh, either default or cube service, uh, cube system. Cube system because that's sort of the system resources and this is kind of a system resource even though it's add on afterwards. Um, Helm will create a whole bunch of objects, RBAC rules, services, pods, deployments, et cetera. Um, and they will be serving that API and they'll link the API in and the API server, the core API server will pick up the new API server and again put the API resources into the standard list and you can access it like, like it was never not there. And I think that's about it for me and okay. ready for the demo. Okay, uh, can everybody hear me fine? Okay, so what are we gonna be doing for our demo? For our demo, we're going to be uh, provisioning a MySQL database. We're gonna be connecting an app to it that lets people vote on whether they like cats or dogs more. Uh, we're gonna see that data flow through to the database instance. Well, then we're gonna connect a second app to the same database instance that's gonna show those votes in a pie chart. So the two apps don't actually know about each other. They're connected, they're bound to the same database instance. Uh, and we'll, we'll see how we do that. So this is just a short rundown of the commands I'm about to run. Uh, the Kubernetes versions are on the bottom, the CF ones are on the top. Uh, so this is assuming I've already installed Helm, uh, sorry, I've already used Helm to install service catalog on my CFCR uh, cluster, and I've already added the broker. Uh, so, and that broker can be wherever for me, it's just running in a pod locally on my Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use uh, SVCAT, which is a kube CLI plugin that we have written. Uh, we, the services catalog team, to act as sort of a, a friendly front end for the service catalog. Uh, otherwise, you just see me run kubectl create five times in a row, and it wouldn't make much sense. <laughs> um, so first, I'm gonna provision uh, the database. So this is sort of the Kubernetes equivalent of Cloud Foundry create service. It's gonna go talk to the broker, be like, hey broker, provision me a database. Uh, I'm gonna supply a class name, MariaDB, and a plan name, default. Uh, those correspond in CF to the name of the service and the name of the service plan. They're the same thing. Uh, and then I'm gonna tell it to create a binding for my service instance. Uh, and I'm gonna pass it a secret name. So this is a little where the abstractions used in Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry differ a little bit. Uh, in Cloud Foundry, when you create a binding for a service instance, it's explicitly attached to a running application. It says create a binding for this service instance, inject those creds into my app using VCAP services. Kubernetes has this notion of a secret. Uh, this is a core resource type in Kubernetes. It's not part of service catalog, and it's basically used for holding secrets. So if you have sensitive credentials, usernames, passwords, uh, encryption keys, that sort of thing, uh, you can create it in a secret and then attach that secret to things you want to use that secret but you don't necessarily want to have full access to it. So say you have the encryption key for, I don't know, you used to log into something and you have an application that requires it but you don't want everyone who has access to your app to be able to see that, you could put it in a secret, attach the secret to your app and away you go. So when we create a binding in Kubernetes, uh, rather than injecting those directly into a running pod or deployment, uh, we stick it in a secret. And then we then manually attach that secret to our, our running pod or deployment. So I'm gonna go ahead and start us off. Uh, so again, I'm using a plugin, SVCAT. It's sort of gonna provide some, some friendlier commands so we actually get some output instead of just pushing and reading YAML files over again. So we can see here, I have two services that are installed in my service catalog, MariaDB and Sample Service 2. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use SVCAT to provision myself an instance. And I can see that that was created and it's ready. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use the same. Uh, oh, I've forgotten, it's bind under the instance name. Anyway. Creds, 
I think. Secret dash name. Okay. Now, this is also where our flow differs a little bit uh, between Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. So in Cloud Foundry, you kind of need to have an app already running because, like I said, bindings are attached to specific apps. That's not so in Kubernetes. So if I go ahead and get my secrets, uh, I can see the one I just created up here. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could get that secret and see all those creds that were just created. Now I'm going to go ahead and create my actual application, but before I do, so this is, oh, that is not as much of it as I was hoping to show. Um, so this is the YAML for my, my application. I'm deploying it as a pod, which is just one single container, the simplest way I can do it. And in this pod declaration, I have my secret ref. So this says, when I create this pod, I'm expecting there to already be a secret named binding. Uh, take that information and stick it into this pod. So I'm going to go ahead and create that app. Uh, and then it's going to be up and running. We can go ahead and see my app running. So I'm going to set up the database. That's just a simple thing and injects the scheme I'm about to use. And then I'm going to go ahead and just put some votes in. Um, so I have this running, used the binding to, inject, or to create the secret, injected the secret into the thing. Uh, now I'd like to see what I voted for. So I'm going to go ahead and create a second application. Uh, let me go back. That does the same thing. So now if you were doing this in Cloud Foundry, I would push an entirely new app. I already have my service instance that still exists, so I would simply bind it to my second app and then restart it so the creds get injected. Now, in Kubernetes, because bindings are attached to secrets, I don't have to create a new binding. I can just reuse the same binding I already created. Uh, so over here, I'm going to take a look at my pod specification for the second app. And we can see at the bottom I'm injecting the same secret. So this saves me a little bit of busy work. I don't have to create umpteen bindings for umpteen apps. I want to bind to the same service instance. I'm going to go ahead and create that. See, it was created. Wait for it to come up. It's up and running. And we can see apparently more people like dogs. I'm going to put some more votes for cats in there. We can see it updates. Um, so that's the basic workflow of how do I push a pod, how do I connect to a service, how do I create bindings. Um, it's pretty close to the Cloud Foundry model, not exactly the same. Uh, so the only part we have left is I'm going to talk briefly about some tips for creating platform independent brokers. Um, so this is actually pretty easy to do in this day and age. Um, OSBA API was originally spun out of Cloud Foundry. Uh, and it originally contained a lot of CF-specific assumptions. Uh, things were namespaced in terms of organizations and spaces, which are a Cloud Foundry idea, but don't necessarily make sense on other platforms. Um, so there's been a lot of work in the past year that uh, is moving Osbapi away from this. We've replaced orgs and spaces in the spec with a generic context object that can contain uh, it has the name of the platform, and then it can contain arbitrary parameters. So for Cloud Foundry, it can still use orgs and spaces. Uh, over here on Service Catalog, we're currently in the process of implementing uh, namespace brokers. So if you're familiar with Kubernetes namespaces, they're just tags that can be put on resources to restrict access, them, access to them, uh, and that would go in the context object. Uh, currently, uh, brokers are intended to be stateless. Uh, that might be changing in the near future. So uh, at least in service broker authors that we've talked to here at Service Catalog, uh, we found that although they're intended to be stateless, most service broker authors are storing some state somewhere. Um, and we might be moving to taking advantage of that in the very near future. Uh, we just had discussions literally last week uh, about starting design of version 3 of the open service broker API. Um, and it's the, we didn't really make any hard and fast decisions, but the general way the wind seemed to be blowing is that we're going to be moving towards more stateful brokers in the future, um, be, mainly because that would allow us to implement get endpoints. So you could ask a service broker, 
what service instances do you have provisioned? What bindings do you have? And then the platform could make decisions based on that. So that's just something that's going to be happening in the very near future that we would like you to be aware of. Uh, we encourage you to write your own service brokers. We ourselves literally just wrote one for the, the hackathon. We wrote a Ethereum blockchain service broker. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So we encourage you to, to try the same for whatever, whatever services you guys would want. And that is it. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, let's, uh, I saw you, but this guy is closer. So Morgan, let's get from the microphone. We'll, we'll get to you in a second. Uh, just a qu question about the uh, bindings. Are they uh, are like copies of them placed in the pods, like or how did the bot like like this you know the secret you uh, created? Okay, so I created a secret, or rather, when I created a binding, service catalog itself populated that it created that secret and populated it for me. Um, let me see if I can find my terminal again, and I can show you what that secret looks like. Oh, shows you how much I know. Morgan, what's what am I supposed to be running? Oh, right. One, yeah. Okay, so up here in this data, we have, this is the information I actually got back in the bro from the broker. So in Cloud Foundry, this is what would be injected uh, for VCAP services. Now for us, it's just stuck in the secret. Now the secret has a notion, it has, uh, it's basically a hash map, so it has keys and values. Um, and these are the environment variables it gets injected into my pod as. So when I'm in my application, I would read the environment variable database and expect to find my database name there. I would read the environment variable username and expect to find my username there. No, it's outside the pod. So that's why when I created my second app, I actually used the same binding, uh, which used the same secret, so it got injected without having to, meet, having to create another binding. Are you good? Okay. Yeah, so the project's still an incubator, and the things it injects are beta. So what, what does that mean in terms of stability and sort of forward-looking API compatibility? Okay, so we are, I assume you're talking about service catalog specifically? Okay, so we are indeed an incubator project, which means, yes, we are technically beta. Um, however, uh, we are the largest by far incubator project in Kubernetes. Um, we are, as we speak, gearing up for our GA release, at which point we will no longer be beta. Um, so yeah, pretty much we're, we're here to stay. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, I was just curious, in that demo, uh, where did that service broker actually live and provision the MySQL instance? Okay, MariaDB so instance? really what's, I got you, sorry. Um, so really what's happening is it's running in a pod on my Kubernetes deployment itself. Uh, it has, this is the broker, if I say, And then every time I create a service instance, I believe it spins it up in another pod. So that's what this big horrendous looking GUID is. So for in this instance, it's all running locally on my laptop. Uh, but because of OzBappy, it just specifies an API. And the thing that implements that API can live anywhere. This could be running on the internet. It could be running somewhere else here in my data center. It could be you know, anything I can access over the network that broker could be running on. And while this case it deploys Kubernetes pods, it could deploy VMs, it could have a monkey that builds computers and attaches them to the network for you, it could, it could be anything. Okay, and there, are there, uh, is there authentication in front of that? Would you have to get credentials uh, for it? So in this specific instance, no, this is an authenticated broker because I was lazy and didn't want to do that for my demo. Um, there is an authentication uh, mechanism for brokers, yes. When you create, when you, add the broker to service catalog, you can specify those. 
Uh, and then you need those credentials to log in to perform actions. Are you good? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, this is all within Kube's uh, space, and I saw you had a little reference of the PCF. Um, I've seen some demos where people actually have the broker, I don't know if it's living in PCF or in Kube. I guess it can live anywhere, theoretically. Mm -hmm. um, so I could theoretically, I guess, spin it up as a Docker container in PCF. Um, do you have an example of um, in GitHub maybe or something, or how I could create a service within PCF that could then call the service broker here in Kube to create the, is there any kind of example you, that I could kind mean? of combine the two so I could have the, a, like a marketplace within PCF, sort of like your marketplace here in Kubernetes where it can make calls to Kubernetes? No? Uh, I'm not so sure like I, I could spin up pod, the database pods in Kubernetes but actually have my app live in PCF. So I could, for instance, if I had a Cloud Foundry, I don't have one running on my laptop right now, um, deploy Cloud Foundry, deploy an app on Cloud Foundry, add this broker that's running in my Kubernetes to Cloud Foundry. Yeah. It would be able to see its catalog. It would be you offer MariaDBs. Um, I could then, in Cloud Foundry, say CF create service. It would cause another pod to be, yeah. you know, be spun up here. And then I could attach that service to my Cloud Foundry application, yes. OK, that's, yeah. Osbapi supports that completely natively. I could add as many platforms to this broker as I want as long as they could actually reach it over whatever network they have. You have to worry about the ingress into Kubernetes, though, to actually right. attach things. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think these particular pods have uh, services created them to be routable outside of the Kubernetes. But if I wrote my broker in a way that allowed that, it could. Is there any examples on anywhere that you want to have that? Um, the, Sure, so the uh, reference implementation of the service broker API that Cloud Foundry provides, CF MySQL release, is a Bosch release that's deployable. It deploys a service broker, it deploys a, I think, five node MySQL cluster replicated, blah, 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 by default. And yeah, that's, so that's, that'd be a Bosch release that would be VMs running on your network somewhere. You could add that to your Cloud Foundry, you could add it to your Kubernetes, you'd be able to see it from both of them and, and push, create services, do whatever. Thanks. Although, I, again, I stress, all service brokers, if they are compliant to the spec, can do that. Anything else? Resource page. Oh, right. Please come participate in open source. Um, as we said earlier, we were doing, we were thinking about V3. Um, that would be the first link. Uh, you know, you can come and inject your opinion. We have meetings every week, all the yeah. time. So if you have if you have any any needs, any wants, things, if you're a broker author and you really need, I don't know, get endpoints or some other weird thing, uh, please come and and contribute. Converse. We'd be great, uh, ecstatic to hear your actual opinions of people who actually use this junk. Uh, and then and then, <laughs> a couple other links. The second one is just uh, the cloudfoundry.org page on the CF container runtime, so you can see what it is. It's really just a Kubernetes that's deployed by Bosch. Uh, and then the last link is the thing we actually work on, Kubernetes service catalog. That is the main hub page for that. So you can see that. We have instructions on how to install it. It should work seamlessly with your CFCR deployment if you want to try a new service catalog. OK? There's no more questions. Thank you for coming. Woo.